<sighs> All right, here we go. Another little tour, huh? Go figure. That's what we do here. Anyways, today's gonna be an interesting one. I'm gonna take you through a little tour of uh, Native American New York, the history of uh, the Native Americans here in New York, a concise history. All right, relax, this isn't a whole college course, but uh, you know, there aren't many videos about this, so I thought it'd be interesting to cover. Anyways, uh, before we start, I'll tell you where we are. We are actually, well, well, before we start, Eric, how are you? I'm doing all right. Yeah. I heard I should take a boat tour or something. Yeah, we're getting, we're, they're trying to scam us over here into taking a uh, Statue of Liberty tour. But uh, anyways, uh, we're, before we start, I wanted to explain where we are. We're actually at a uh, flagpole. There's a monument at the base uh, commemorating the 1626 uh, purchase of Manhattan by uh, Peter Minuit, the director general at the time of the Dutch West India Company. We're gonna get into all that. This is just the intro, baby. Now, uh, before we start, guys, check out the Patreon. Huge help. That's what funds these things. Gonna try to keep making more and more of these. Uh, there's some extras on there, too. Gonna start a little podcast like every other human being on the planet, but it's just on Patreon. So uh, if you wanna want to check it out, go there. Also like it, subscribe to the video and all that stuff into the YouTube. Helps bump us in the analytics, baby, right? Ahead of all the, uh, ahead of all the, you know. Uh, boat tours. Boat tour fails. <laughs> all right, well anyways, uh, we're gonna be walking. We're gonna be covering a lot of land today. A lot of, uh, a lot of eye land today. So uh, Eric, what do you think? Should we just do this? Yeah, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Okay, so it all kind of began uh, about 12,000 years ago when the first, quote, Native Americans made their trek over to North America through the land bridge, uh, the Siberian land bridge that connected Russia to Alaska back then. Uh, during the Ice Age, uh, it was actually exposed land after the snow melt and everything, it was put underwater. They came over and they started inhabiting North America, went all the way down to South America, etc. Uh, now, when the first, you know, colonizers, the first, you know, explorers or whatever came over in the late 1400s, there are estimates saying that there were about 100 million uh, Native Americans living uh, in North and South America, uh, the majority of which were living in North America. In fact, there were cities in, in Mexico that would have been the largest, uh, the second largest or third largest cities in the entire world at the time. So that's kind of what we're dealing with here. Now, the Algonquin people are the ones who are here in New York State. Uh, and I guess there are estimates that or there are about 80,000 uh, Algonquin, uh, you know, different tribes and different groups, uh, but the population, about 80,000 of them, when this area started to be settled. Here in the five boroughs, uh, there is an estimated about like 15,000 uh, at the time. Now, of the Algonquin people, there are sub-tribes or tribes, and the tribe here located in the New York City area was the Lenape tribe. Now keep in mind there are different uh, groups within the Lenape tribe. Uh, you know, the, you talk about the Munsi, the Canarsi, etc. Those are all kind of beneath the Lenape uh, kind of subset. Today, uh, a lot of Lenape have gone to calling themselves the Delaware people. So you'll hear different names uh, when you uh, talk to different people. So I'm here at the, the Bronx uh, Botanical Garden because inside they have a huge rock, I mean, not that huge, but big enough, where there's actually a drawing, a petroglyph of a turtle that they found nearby uh, and it's saved. And they don't know exactly the, uh, the, uh, you know, when it was made, but a long, long time ago. Uh, so it's kind of like the earliest roots, uh, I guess, uh, the, I can't get in there right now because it's closed, so go figure. You know, they're not gonna open up for me. I, I told them, I was like, hey, do you know how many subscribers I have on YouTube? And they're like, dude, beat it, all right? Unless you're Logan Paul, beat it. Uh, but it's in there and you can go see it which is pretty cool. It's also interesting to note that when the uh, first settlers came, they had been here for so long, they had kind of mastered the land and they had actually become stewards. They had actually uh, achieved some kind of balance to where they were able to grow and to cultivate uh, the wildlife and make it so much of a point that it actually grew and became super, super populated. Tons of whales and beavers and, and bears, all kinds of things that, so much so that every, every uh, explorer who came here commented on how abundant all the wildlife here was. That wasn't an accident. That was all because they lived in harmony with this land and they didn't, they didn't look to deplete it the way, uh, you know, we kind of have. So there's a lot we could have learned and still can learn from their way of life. Uh, you know, today there is still wildlife in New York, but most of it's just rats and pigeons and, uh, you know, squirrels and mice. I just found a mouse in my house recently. Unbelievable. You, you appreciate that, right, Eric? I do appreciate you're, you're, a, you're a vegetarian. You're a vegetarian, man. A vegan, I'm so sorry. 
you're an insufferable vegan. Uh, always makes uh, our meals very difficult. I'll tell you that, guys. But, uh, you know, he's worth it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> we, just, we just had a moment. All right, well, this is the New York Botanical Garden. Gotta kind of set the stage here. Like I said, Lenape were the ones inhabiting this area. Let's go to when it kind of changed for the Lenape here in uh, New York City. So life before the Dutch settled here was pretty much the Native Americans living in different uh, villages all around the island of Manhattan, coming to Manhattan to hunt, to trade, uh, do all kinds of things. And here, where I'm standing right now, was the location of one of these villages. I'm actually on Mineta Street and Mineta Lane here in Greenwich Village in what was back then known as Sapo Kanakin. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, uh, so take it easy. But uh, this area was, uh, well, first of all, Sapo Kanakin means uh, plowed field or tobacco field. Uh, and it's in Greenwich Village, which means uh, land of $5 coffees, $5 coffees. Uh, but this street actually is called Manetta from the word Manetta, which was actually a snake or a, it was the name of a creek that was actually located here, a creek that went from the Hudson River all the way to basically 23rd Street, what is today, Madison Square uh, Park. So it actually snaked through, so it was a very natural kind of little oasis here. And the word Manetta actually means evil spirit or snake water is the name of the actual creek. And it was actually a very sacred site uh, to the Lenape uh, who lived in this village and this area. Uh, they believed that it was the remnants of an evil spirit uh, known as Manetta that was driven underground by Nanabush, which was the, uh, like the, the victory, the hero. And it was kind of this evil spirit. It wasn't like the devil. They had no concept of the devil or a Satan type figure. It was more like this spirit that would inhabit, uh, inhabit people and have a negative effect on people or societies where it was ever present. And it was Nana Bush who drove him underground. And the only thing left when, he, when this evil snake spirit was driven underground was the creek. Uh, and the guys in Washington Square trying to sell you oregano. Uh, but it was a sacred site, this, this creek that was located here, uh, which is kind of interesting. So this whole little village was kind of uh, inhabited around that time. And up near what is today uh, the meatpacking district at 13th and around 13th and 8th, around that area, was a uh, trading post, actually, where different groups would come in and trade uh, in what is today the meatpacking district, where they still trade, except today you're trading in, you know, Diane von Furstenberg and uh, Teslas or whatever. Uh, so it is kind of interesting how these, you know, these have a history. We're walking through this area and you're, you know, going to get a falafel or something and you're walking through what used to be a sacred site for uh, the Lenape uh, group that lived in Sapo Kanakin. So, they weren't the only ones in this area, so let's talk about that at the next spot. So now we're sitting here in this uh, flower pot, you know, because Eric chose this good spot here. It looks good, right, Eric? It's beautiful. Nice. All right, cool. And I know I might have backwards. I total, look like a total narc. Uh, you kids got any doobies, huh? And it's only because of the light. But uh, we're in Astor Place because this used to be kind of a convergence of different roads and be a place where different groups for uh, sub-tribes that were in the area or used the area would come and meet. This was uh, known as Kintakoying. They were the Wappingers, the Canarsie, the Munsee, and the Sapokanakan people from Greenwich Village. And because it was the kind of this convergence they had, uh, they would meet for all kinds of things, at intertribal councils, games, uh, you know, orations from the Sakums, all this kind of thing in this area and of course today because it's a, still a crossroads you have what americans have brought to all crossroads and that's a freaking starbucks uh go figure uh, but back then they would use this for all kinds of things and because it was a convergence they had what they believe would be an elm tree or an oak tree uh that used they used to mark these kind of spots so uh when they grew these trees they would actually plant them as an acorn in the skull of a famous or important figure in their uh, tribes and it would grow sometimes coming through the skull in a, a regular way. They've actually found bits of bone uh, in different uh, oak trees that mark these spots around the country. So it's kind of interesting. So like I said, because it was a convergence, they used to do all different things, you know, uh, meetings, uh, speeches, games, uh, probably comedy open mics, you know, good lord, there's plenty of them here in New York. And to add irony to all of it, this is now named Astor Place after John Jacob Astor, who made his fortune initially off of the fur trade, which the uh, Native Americans were huge in helping the, um, the Dutch and, uh, and the colonists who came at the time uh, build. Uh, and they would trade different things for, to, these, to these Native Americans who helped them basically catch these beaver pelts and other furs that then they would sell in Europe. 
So it's kind of interesting that it's now named after John Jacob Astor. Whose uh, descendant, uh, John Jacob Astor IV, died on the Titanic? Uh, I always like to bring up that fact. Pretty cool, right, Eric? Die on the Titanic? Yeah, that's a cool fact. Yeah, very <laughs> to, cool. to have a death on the Titanic. All right, well, an interesting crossroads here. Uh, Kintakoyan, and what is today Astor Place? Yeah, where are you going to find this stuff out, huh? Anyways, let's keep moving. So a huge turning point uh, for the Native Americans was when the Dutch finally arrived. So everyone knows that in 1609, Henry Hudson, quote, discovered, you know, this area. He didn't really discover it. All right, relax. I know. Uh, actually, I did a video on Henry Hudson. You should check that one out. But he came in 1609. To Henry Hudson? Huh? Was that, was that a comment to Henry Hudson? Yeah. Oh, okay. Henry Hudson is one of my Patreon members. Oh, great. Um, anyways, uh, Henry Hudson gets here in 1609. He, uh, you know, he, he scouts out the area, he goes back, but it wasn't until later on that they actually settled here. In fact, I'm to, right now in Inwood, uh, in Inwood, at the uh, park here in Inwood, next to what's called uh, Shore Copac, the rock. Uh, this is, legend has it, where the actual transaction in 1626 between the director general of the Dutch West India Company at the time, Peter Minuit, uh, and the Native Americans who, quote, uh, you know, had the land at the time, this is where it went down. Um, now, uh, it's, there was no record, actually, of this transaction. Someone wrote about it in a letter. Uh, there's no record, which is crazy. You think that for buying a 22 square mile island, there'd at least be like, you know, a, a CVS length receipt or something. But no, uh, there was just a, a mention of it in a letter saying that it was bought for 60 guilders worth of stuff. Uh, and it wasn't until a few months later when the island of Staten Island was bought, uh, where they detailed what they traded for. Uh, that they kind of pieced it together and it was it was wampum it was uh you know uh, blankets and tools all kinds of stuff and just so you know wampum was basically like these little beads uh they were not beads but like shells and things that they would drill and make into like little uh belts and sashes and all kinds of things and it was used kind of as currency but not until the dutch started using it as currency before that they just used them for ceremonies and all kinds of stuff uh, so they didn't actually even have currency before the Dutch introduced it as currency and started trading uh, with it. They also gave them um, tools that made it easier to make wampum. Uh, make wampum. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. You got to make wampum. Make wampum until the early morning, baby. Sorry. Anyways, uh, uh, that's what they traded for. Sixty dollars worth of stuff. In the mid 1800s, a, uh, they, they threw an arbitrary number of $24. That's what, that's what 60 guilders was. Totally arbitrary number, not actually true. They've since done research and they've, they've put it more towards like, you know, in the hundreds of dollars. Still kind of a deal. Uh, and but it was kind of on par with what other, you know, sales were going for at the time. However, they did obviously rob the uh, Native Americans blind of this land. Uh, it was, you know, a very small price to pay. And on top of everything, the people, the, the, the uh, natives who they bought it from had no concept of ownership the way the Dutch did. So what was happening was they kind of thought it was just like, here, here's some money, like a tribute almost, to share the land with you. Um, you know, if it was like if I came up to you, Eric, and I said, hey, I'll give you 500 bucks for that air right under your nose that you're breathing. Here you go. You'd be like, yeah, sure, I'll take that. You know, I can't, I, I don't, I'm not an owner of this thing. So here, take it. There you go. There's, give me my 500 bucks. It's kind of like, uh, you know, to them, the, that concept of ownership didn't really exist. Uh, so that all went down here. Uh, supposedly, there are also some people who believe that it happened more towards where we started the video at the little, um, you know, that little uh, flagpole thingy. Um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you remember that? Those were the days, huh? We were so young. We should go back there at the end of the video. We should. That's a good idea. I may end the video there. Good idea. And one of the ways that they actually decided that 60 guilders was a few hundred bucks is they started to look at other transactions and what guilders kind of meant. One of the things they found was that a typical Dutch West India Company soldier earned like, you know, 100 guilders a year in, uh, you know, in, in uh, salary. And keep in mind, you know, the Dutch West India Company was like the biggest corporation in the world at the time. Like it, it kind of started the whole idea of mega corporation. You know, so it was like Google or something. So I bet that soldier for his 100 guilders worth got you know, got access to the conference room ping pong table and, uh, you know, company masseuses or whatever as well. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of where they arrived at the few hundred bucks worth of stuff that they traded for all of Manhattan. And these kind of 
uh, transactions were happening all over New York City, also in Brooklyn, Staten Island, everything was being, quote, bought from the Native Americans who then realized uh, very quickly what it meant to have it bought from them when they were pretty much booted off the land. But this is it, Shore Copic Rock here in Inwood, uh, Inwood Hill Park, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool park to come to. All right, I think we're ready to move on. Eric, what do you think? Let's go. Let's go. So after the Dutch kind of settled here, the Native Americans would interact with them a lot actually uh, throughout the island, but also here. This is actually the uh, Alexander Hamilton's Customs House, now the Smithsonian Museum of the American Indian, if you can't read that giant sign behind me. Uh, this museum wasn't there back then. Uh, it was put here because this used to be the site of Fort Amsterdam, which was where, you know, there'd be a steady stream of Native Americans uh, coming in and out, uh, trading, uh, you know, they're usually, you know, either trading or, you know, getting land bought from them, you know, on unfavorable terms. Let's just say they weren't braiding each other's hair and talking about who was cute in the colony. It wasn't exactly the most friendly of terms all the time, uh, but they would come here where the fort was located and they would be in and out in this area. And then over here to my right is where Broadway begins. And Broadway was actually established by the Dutch on what was already a trail started by the uh, Lenape Indians that were here before uh, that actually took them up and actually they had they had a trail that went all the way up to pretty much where Montreal is today. Uh, they connected all of the different communities and ways to get around so they would kind of mapped out a good amount of the island uh, for the Dutch when they arrived. So it was here that the director generals also of the Dutch West India Company would make their kind of office or whatever you want to call it uh, and a very important one uh, for at least the Native Americans was in 1638. His name was Willem Kieft, and he was the namesake of Kieft's War. A very unfortunate incident uh, starting in the early 1640s. Basically what happened was in 1638 there was a Mohican Mohawk War, and after that war this guy Kieft came in 1638 and he tried to demand tribute from the Native American tribes in the area for quote protection, almost like a mafia move. And the Native Americans were like, we're not gonna give you money. So he did what the mafia does and he kind of starts striking back. They start defending themselves and it becomes really, really ugly all the way until 1645. In fact, in 1643, they would just go into towns and just slaughter Native Americans, their children, their women, uh, a total mess. And it got so ugly that Willem Keefe's uh, mother-in-law here at the fort was kicking around the severed heads of Native Americans all over the floors of the place because it was that bloody. Uh, can't take your in-laws anywhere, I guess. But uh, it got really bad. In fact, in 1644 was the massacre at Pound Ridge, which is up in what is today Westchester, where hundreds of women and children were literally thrown into the water to drown uh, right there near the water. It was, I mean, it was very, very ugly. By the end of Keefe's War, there was uh, over 1,600 Native Americans were slaughtered, uh, and obviously some colonists as well, but it was a total, uh, a total massacre. Uh, and because of it, Keefe was booted. He got, he got the ax. Uh, in fact, he had brought on people to help him fight the war, brought a man named John Underhill. Uh, you're probably thinking, oh, Tom, John Underhill, that's the guy, the, the famous Indian uh, murderer from the Pequot War. Well, you're right, that was him. And they brought him on and he basically helped to kind of, uh, you know, get, get things done in that way. It was pretty, pretty dark. After they had enough of him, they got, he got the boot and to replace him in 1647 came Peter Stuyvesant. And it was Peter Stuyvesant who kind of whipped the colony into shape uh, and made it uh, attractive enough for the British to come and take it over in 1664. Uh, also too, you may remember that uh, Peter Stuyvesant, he was the famous peg leg director of, uh, you know, of Dutch West India Company. He was the guy who they would say you could hear him walking into the room, you know, just kind of like, you know, with the, sorry, that wasn't, that was kind of, I don't know if that's, I don't, I don't want to get canceled for doing that. I don't want to get like, a, you know, if you're in the Peg Leg Society of America, don't blog about me, but that was kind of him. He was a very famous figure. And today you have the Smithsonian branch, National Museum of American Indian. Uh, I've talked about the uh, Smithsonian system. I actually talked about it in the uh, uh, museum, uh, Museums of New York video. There's a little, uh, Anyways, uh, this is a really great museum uh, de uh, kind of detailing the, uh, the, 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 the development of the Native American population here in Manhattan, as well as in other parts of New York City and Long Island. Uh, but this was actually, it wasn't until 1989 that a federal law was passed creating this museum. So it's a fairly recent thing, uh, but you've got to remember this history. It's very important to remember. And, uh, you know, there was a whole entire existence 
of a, of a nation and nations before the Dutch and other groups settled here in the New World, so it's important to know. With that, let's go to our last little wrap-up spot. And what do you think, Eric? Should we go? Last wrap up spot. I'm not a, look, I, this, I don't have a teleprompter, all right? Cut me some slack. All right, let's go. Oh, look at that. I surprised you once again. All right, well, that was, the, uh, that was a little tour, a little concise little walk and uh, drive through uh, Manhattan, show you guys and, and elsewhere to show you guys some of the little spots here uh, pertaining to Native American history. There's a lot of it here. People don't even realize it. We're always talking about the Dutch and the British and the, you know, the, you know George Washington and all that stuff, but there was a lot of history here, you know, even more, um, more than there is American history, and that's worth covering. Uh, so we, we covered the beginnings, we covered the, the, the purchase, we covered the, the, the problems between the Dutch and the Native Americans, we covered the pre-Native American history, we covered everything. It was a good time. Eric, did you learn something today? You always ask me if I learned something suspiciously in the same place as the intro. Yes. Did you learn something? Uh, yeah. Good. And I know you're not just saying that because uh, we're shooting these both at the beginning of the day without having heard anything what I'm going to say. Right? Yeah, correct. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, uh, guys, that was the video. If you enjoyed it, please check out the Patreon. Like I said, there's some extras on there. That's what funds these things. I don't do all the endorsements and everything uh, and all that. So it's very, very important. Uh, giving you guys a lot of stuff here. And there's some extras on there, like I said. Also, too, please uh, all, uh, you know, like, subscribe, do that whole thing. That helps uh, grow the channel, which is very important. And uh, if you want to see more of them, more of these, then you're going to have to do that. So uh, that being said, we're done. Eric, what do you think? Man, should we go get a... Uh, Go take a Statue of Liberty boat tour and, you know, get dropped off. I don't know and, if we should do that. But well, we, let's go see where they take us. Maybe we'll end up in, like, you know, Long Island somewhere uh, with, with no clothes and no kidneys. Uh, all right. Well, uh, that's it, guys. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys later. Till the next time.